Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing out there around the world on the internet? I hope you're having a good morning, a good day, good afternoon, a good evening, whatever time it is where you are. We'll be starting in about 30 seconds here. Just gonna make sure everything's working for this English lesson. Make sure that uh, all of the right things are on and functioning. It looks like they are. By the way, in the next 13 seconds, I'll try to tell you that there is a live stream tomorrow as well at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, why don't you come and join that if you have the time as well. Three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about things. Oh, did I do that wrong? I clicked the wrong button already. <laughs> so, so far, so good today. That was a sarcastic use of that phrase. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about things on other things. Now, you might think this is a strange topic and I think it's more of it was hard for me to think of a title. But if you look around you, you will see things that have buttons or lids or caps or dials or knobs or cranks. There's a whole bunch of things in our world and they have other things on them that we use every day. So, in this English lesson, I thought I'll see if I can think of 30 or 35 things, little things in the world around us that we use to interact with things or that we use um, when we use something. There, I just used the verb use twice. Um, and again, it was hard to think of a title but it's things on other things and you'll see what it is in a bit. Even though the title is kind of vague or obscure, there's two new words for you maybe. Um, the lesson itself is full of very common words we use to describe the things around us that are on other things. Well, hey, I hope everyone's having a good day. Um, we here are in the middle of an early heat wave, 30 degrees Celsius yesterday. That's really hot for us. <laughs> I know that's not hot for all of you and it's supposed to go up to 31 today. So, I'm happy to be in my house right now. It's already almost 20 degrees outside. Um, so, hopefully, it's not too bad and then tomorrow, it will cool off. Um, by the way, we're doing this lesson today on things on other things. There will be a live Q&A lesson tomorrow uh, and I will be doing that outside. It's beautiful outside. The trees have leafed out so there's lots of shade for me to sit in uh, and I will do it at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, uh, look for that. Anyways, um, do have some good English conversations in the chat this morning. As I mentioned, the title is a little obscure. That means it's hard to figure out what this lesson is about. Um, I couldn't think of a really good title but we will be talking about a lot of very common things that you will see and use in the world and I think you'll uh, once we get started, you'll see just how common these things are. Um, I was gonna say one other thing. If you have a question, please ask it using the form and uh, Dave will be here momentarily, I think, to moderate the chat if he's not here already. Maybe I missed him. I'm just gonna do a little sound check here. It's always strange when I listen to my own voice. Do you have that? If you record yourself and then when you hear yourself, for me, it always sounds more like my brother than me. So, it just made me smile a little bit when I put that in. Anyways, uh, we should get started, right? I don't have all the time in the world. I'm a little more relaxed than normal because I have an easy teaching morning. Everything's planned and ready to go. My students are actually writing a test. That's an easy morning for me because the lesson plan is ready to go. Oh, and I see Dave's here. Awesome. Uh, let's get started. First one, label. So, often when you buy something, there will be information on the side and we often call that the label. If you have a can of soup, it has a label. If you want to know how much salt or sugar or other things are in your soup, you can read the label. In English, we often will say to people, well, read the label. If someone said to me, um, do these cookies have a lot of sugar in them? And if they were store-bought cookies, in English when we say store-bought, it means something you bought at the store instead of baking at home. I might say, well, I don't know, read the label. 
or if someone is allergic to something. Sometimes people are allergic to certain things in food. You might say to them, you better read the label before you eat that. So, the first one label, you can see now how these are uh very common words um that we use to describe things on other things but a label is something you would find on a box on a can of food or other places. A tag. So, this is a kind of a funny one. Um most shirts have a tag in the back. I can't really show you mine very easily. Um when the tag is too big though, it bothers me. I don't like it when my shirt has a really big tag or two tags in it because it just kind of feels weird. So, I often cut them out but a tag is something that you will find in a shirt. It might look like this where the tag is sewn into the shirt but a tag can also be something that hangs from a piece of clothing with a string and there are tags on other things as well more than just clothing. I can't think of other examples right now but probably the most common example would be when you buy a shirt, it will usually have a tag in it or a dress or a blouse. A sticker. So, a sticker on one side is sticky. That means when you get a sticker, it's usually on a piece of paper and you peel it off and it has one side with a design and the other side is sticky. When you touch it, it sticks to your finger. So, you take a sticker off the piece of paper it comes on and you put it on something else. My students have a lot of stickers on their laptops at school. It's very common for people to decorate their laptop with some stickers. Usually, people find stickers representing things they like. Maybe a cartoon they watched as a kid or a sticker from their favorite band. Um maybe <laughs> I don't have Bob the Canadian stickers but if I did, you might put one on your laptop. Um maybe I should have stickers. No, nah, I'm not gonna do stickers. Anyways, stickers are usually colorful and bright. Again, one side of the sticker is sticky and when you put it on something, it doesn't come off again. It is stuck on there. So, I used a bunch of words in there. Sticker. The sticker is sticky. When you put it on something, it's stuck on there. So, there you go. A number of different variations uh and words to talk about things that stick to other things. Magnet. So, we used to have more of these. A magnet is something that is attracted to metal. So, it's it does the same thing as a sticker kind of but it will only stick to something metal and you can take it back off again and put it on something else that is metal. We used to have a lot of stickers on the front of our fridge. But about 15 years ago, we bought a fridge where the front is not um it's not magnetic. You can't stick stuff to it. I think it's a different kind of metal. It's probably aluminum or something. But the side of our fridge is still metal or steel. So, you could put magnets on the side. So, a magnet has a north and south pole and a magnet will stick to another magnet or it will stick to something that is metal. I'm sure you have these in your country in, as well. A lot of businesses will make magnets and give them to people hoping that they'll put the magnet on their fridge and then it'll be like a little advertisement for that business. Cap. So, here's this is a tricky one because I'm gonna talk about cap and lid and we do sometimes use them interchangeably. When I buy a bottle of water, it has a cap on the top. I take the cap off to drink water and then I put the cap back on. Um I was gonna say something else about the cap. Oh, we sometimes call it a bottle cap if it's on a bottle but we also have the word lid. So, this is a bo- a water bottle that you can refill. The thing that goes on top here, I would call a lid but I would also sometimes call this a lid but I would never call this a cap. And I was trying to figure out the actual difference last night and I don't really know what it is. I think whenever you have a bottle for drinking like soda or pop or water, we we call it a bottle cap and I think if you have a jar like a jar of jam or a jar of peanut butter, I would call it the lid Um, and for a bottle like this, I would call it the lid. So, slight difference. I wouldn't say to my kids, put the cap back on the peanut butter. I would say put the lid back on the peanut butter but if someone was drinking water um and they didn't put the lid 
sorry, I should say cap. And they didn't put the cap on nicely and it popped off. I would say, oh, you didn't you didn't turn the cap tight on this bottle. So, cap and lid. Slight difference there. Hopefully, I did a good job of explaining the difference between the two. Clasp. Now, I do not wear a lot of jewelry. I don't wear a necklace and I don't wear a bracelet. But often, when you wear jewelry, one of the ways you put it on is there's a little clasp. So, if I had a gold chain around my wrist, if I had a bracelet, there would be a clasp I would use. I would kind of put it on and then I would kind of click it together or connect it together with the clasp. So, these are very, very tiny clasps that you would have on. I think the most common place would be a necklace or a pendant. A pendant is like a necklace as well but it usually has something hanging at the end. Um and then there's usually a clasp at the back. Um yeah, I don't wear jewelry because um like even my watch um I don't know. I don't like having things on me. I don't know what the term for that would be. Um so, I'm not someone who wears a lot of jewelry. I think jewelry is beautiful but I personally don't wear very much jewelry. Let's make this a little bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. So, they kind of click. You click and hook. Click and hook it and then it's uh together. A panel. So, there are a lot of things in the world that have a panel. A panel is any part of something that has a lot of buttons, a lot of lights, a lot of dials, a lot of knobs. I'll talk about all of those later. Um but it's usually on a piece of equipment or on a machine. Sometimes we call it the control panel. I don't think I have a, oh, I do have a slide for that. Sometimes we call it a control panel because it's where you stand and it's what you use to control the machine uh, or the equipment. And I'm using machine and equipment interchangeably. We often do that in English. At work, we have a lot of machines. At work, we have a lot of equipment. Uh, and they all have panels or control panels on them. If the panel only had little lights, we would probably just call it a panel. But as soon as the panel has buttons and switches, we would call it a control panel. So, that would be the difference between those two. Hey, we should do some questions and I should have a sip of water. Uh let me get a question on the screen here. It's not popping up. I'm not sure why. <laughs> probably because I Looks like because I closed the window that does questions. So, we're gonna have the wrong form pop up for a sec while I feed the information in for the correct. Just give me one second here. Should pop up in a moment hopefully. Oh, we just have a white screen right now. This is what happens when uh Bob the Canadian went to market last night. So, last night I went to market. And uh oh, well, it briefly popped up there. Hmm, now the chat from the wrong window is coming in. Let me see, what do I need to do here? Double click here. I'll get this figured out. Don't worry. Um, let's see, form questions, Google Chrome. Does that look like the right one? Um, you guys can see your chat on the chat. That's kind of funny. Um, Chrome.exe. So, I'm just troubleshooting here. Let me give me a second here to figure out why that's not working. I had it all working this morning and then I uh I must have done something to mess that up. Let me just start again for a second here. Let me go to slides, back to questions. Is this the first time I've had uh technical difficulties like this while let's see here um isn't shared with me oh that isn't normally a problem but you're right I did miss that step didn't I let's see if that does anything um do, do, do. Hmm. I think I figured it out. This let's let me just uh briefly talk about nothing. 
while we wait for it to pop up on the actual live stream on my screen. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. That's a good thing to say, Mode. Maybe someone is messing with the control panel. Yeah, I'm messing with the control panel. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. We have some questions here. Let me zip through them. Um first question from Renata. Hi, Bob. I hope my question is on topic. Why do native speakers sometimes say on to mean about or concerning? For example, a book on neuroscience. Thank you, sir. It's a funny question because sometimes when I'm making a title for an English lesson, I'll say, this is an English lesson about time. This is a ling- English lesson on time. And even for me, I have to think, well, which one sounds better? But we do. We use them interchangeably. This is an English lesson about things on things. This is an English lesson on things on things. I think about is the better choice most of the time. That's what I would think. Uh let's see. Next question from Yaro Morning. Hi, Yaro. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Hope you are doing well. I bet I don't know many things you are going to teach today. So, thanks a lot. Have fun. You might not know the words but a lot of the things I teach today are all around you right now. So, I hope it's fun to learn the names for all of these things. Uh let's see. From Den. Hi, Bob. I wonder how native speakers pronounce my nickname Levins. That's what I would say. I would say it the same as sevens or elevens. Levins. Could you say it? Some people pronounce the first E in their own way. What is the correct way? I don't know the correct way because I've never heard that nickname before. So, sorry. Lolly lolly. Bonjour, Bob. Please, what's the difference between things and stuff? Merci. We often use things and stuff as general terms to talk about the things around us. Um you know, there's a lot of things on my kitchen table right now because we came home from market and put stuff there. There's a lot of stuff on my kitchen table right now. So, a lot of times we just use them as our I think in French, you might use truc, truc a lot. Um we use it as it's just like a general word to describe anything, right? Like, ah, there's too many things in this cupboard. There's too much stuff in this cupboard. Too many things, too much stuff. We do the grammar is a little different on them though but they do mean the same thing. Uh let's see. Sally says, hello, teacher Bob. Nice to see you again. Title of a book is one of the examples of this topic, isn't that? Isn't it? We would say, yes, absolutely. You will see a title on the front of a book for sure. Definitely. That is a thing on a thing. Um I'm gonna skip questions not related to the topic. So, sorry, Sarah. I'm gonna skip yours. You can come back and ask it tomorrow. Um there is a thank you here though from Abdelmoninim. Abdelmonim. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? I just wanna tell you that your lessons are really help. Oh, your le- that your lessons really helped me to improve my language. God bless you. Thanks. Um it's nice to hear positive feedback. Thank you. Um let's see. I'm gonna skip. Yeah, we're gonna skip anything not related to the topic for now. Um I will mention of course that there is a live lesson tomorrow at 10 a.m. I will be outside um and I will do questions for about an hour. So, if you have a question, please ask it then. Um and then Mode says, oui, truc. I've heard of it before. Yeah, I think that's like the utility word in French. I would say thing and stuff. Things and stuff, those are like utility words. When you you know, what is that thing? Um why do you have so much stuff? Like those are just easy to use words when talking about things. I just used it right there. Um well, that was it for questions. So, we're gonna go back to the slides and keep moving along. Glad I got the question form fixed. Here we go. Handle. So, there are handles on a lot of things. This is a handle on a drawer. So, when I go to the kitchen, the drawers have handles. Um people always like me to say drawer more than once so they can hear how it's pronounced. So, there are handles on all the drawers in my kitchen. There's a handle on the door to my van. I have a toolbox and it has a handle on the top. Basically, a handle is anything that you can grab to either open something or carry something. So, if you have a purse, it has handles on the top. Um I have a case that I carry my laptop in and the case has a handle on top. Again, drawers have a handle. When I open my van, I unlock it and then I pull the handle and then the van door will open. So, there are many things that have handles on it probably because we have hands and it does have the word hand in it. Have you noticed that? 
handle has the word hand in it. It must be um a word that came from the other word. I don't know the exact name for that. Clip. So, a clip is an interesting thing. Um like this is a tape measure and it has a little clip on the side. So, you can clip it on your belt. So, a clip is usually something small and it's usually made so that you can hook something onto yourself. Um a pen actually has a little clip on the on it as well. Some pens do at least. I'm looking for I don't have a pen around but a pen you can click to op- like you can click the pen but often there will be a little uh, clip on the pen if you want to clip it onto your pocket. So, this is a clip. There aren't a lot of clips in the world but I know a friend of mine has a clip for his camera. He can clip it on his belt and my other friend has a phone case a very durable phone case because he works outside and he and it has a clip on the side so he can clip his phone onto his belt. A screen. So, there are screens all around us. So, this is a pretty common one. Um if you look here this calculator the gray part up top the gray green part is the screen. Your phone obviously phones have a screen on them. Your TV is all screen. A control panel might have a small screen on it as well. There are definitely screens all around us. Like my light over there has a control box and there's a little screen on it. It says the light is at 85% brightness. I could turn it up to 100% brightness. Now, it's at 100% and I could turn it back down again. I shouldn't play with my lights while I'm making an English lesson but uh there are many things now that have a screen so that you so that you know what is happening with that device or with that machine. So, a screen. A flap. So, this is an interesting one. A flap is usually a piece of fabric or cloth. I'm trying to show you my pocket here. I don't have a flap over my pocket but this pocket here, the arrow is pointing to what we would call a flap. So, this is a pocket on a shirt. The pocket has a button and that button will close that flap. So, again, a flap is something that it's attached at one end and it moves like this, okay? Um it can move like this as well but yes, there aren't a lot of flaps I can think of in the world but I do have some shirts where there's a pocket and the pocket has you can close the pocket because it has a flap. It's kind of a funny word to say, flap. Knob. So, a knob is something that is usually round. It can be other shapes as well but it's almost always round and it's something that you can grab and turn, okay? So, you can turn the knob. Let's say you have um, a a really old stereo like a, a radio. It might have knobs on the front that you can turn. Our old oven had a knob on the front. You would turn the knob to set the temperature on the stove. So, a knob is a round thing on something that you can grab and turn one way or the other. Um and we sometimes just call it a dial as well. I don't know if oh, I do have dial on here. We'll get to that in a sec. Uh an indicator light. So, an indicator light, if you look here, you see the yellow engine light. So, if you're driving a vehicle and that light comes on, it means that there's something wrong with your engine. Anytime a light is normally off and then turns on when there's a problem on a vehicle or something else, we usually call it an indicator light because it's indicating that something's wrong. So, it's most commonly found in a vehicle. You're driving and then something goes wrong and your mechanic might say, are there any indicator lights on on the dash or on the dashboard? So, an indicator light is a light that comes on on to indicate something to let you know about something uh, with a machine or vehicle or piece of equipment. A dial. So, basically, a dial is a knob. There's no real difference between a dial and a knob. Um so, you might have a dial that you can turn to turn up the volume. You might have a knob you can turn to turn up the volume. I would use both the same way. Um but a dial again is round usually and you can turn it one way or the other. So, you might say someone might say uh to you um oh, it's too loud in here. Which dial is for volume or which knob is for volume. 
button. So I wear a lot of shirts that have buttons. So a button goes through a button hole. You have to sew a button on with thread. If it falls off, I have to sew it back on. Luckily, the shirts I buy always come with two extra buttons on the side. Did you know that with men's shirts? So I have buttons here. If one falls off, there's actually a couple extra buttons right here. I can take one and I can sew it on. Um I also wear shirts that usually have a button down collar. You can see that my collar is attached to my shirt here. There's actually a button here. So a button is something you'll find on an article of clothing on a piece of clothing that you fasten in once you put that piece of clothing on. So when I put my shirt on, I fasten the buttons or I button up my shirt or I do the buttons. Like with little kids, uh, when the buttons are open, we might say, hey, do up your buttons. So buttons, something used to um when you when you're wearing something, it I guess it closes it up. I don't know what the right word for it would be. Um but we also have buttons in other places. So on my microwave, there are buttons. Um there are buttons on my computer. There are buttons on a calculator. There are buttons on this remote control for my light. So if I push this button, it gets dark in here. If I push this button, it gets really light but then my camera will adjust. My camera as well has a lot of buttons on it. This might be the most common thing that you will find on other things, okay? Uh buttons are everywhere around us. They are primarily what we use to control or interact with the machines, the equipment, the devices around us lever. So, this one you might not see as much as I do. A lever is something oh a lever is something that you can move with your hand. So, this here is actually a tractor probably on a farm. I have a lot of farm equipment. A lot of farm equipment has levers on it. My tractors have levers I can move. On the tractor, if I want the engine to speed up, I move a lever ahead. It's called the throttle. There's no foot pedal. Well, sorry, my one tractor does have a foot pedal. But normally with a tractor, there is a lever. When I um yeah, I'm not gonna describe all the things I do with a tractor but a lever is like um a straight thing with a handle and you can kind of move it one way or the other to make a machine do something. I'm trying to think of something in your house that might have a lever on it. Maybe someone can think of something in the chat. Something that might have a lever on it. But uh, it might be more common on on equipment like big pieces of equipment. So, we have barcodes and we have QR codes. So, a barcode is often found on the label of a piece of uh, of a food item. If you have a can of soup on the label, there will be a barcode somewhere. Um a a barcode is used at the grocery store so the computer can see what you're buying. When you scan it, it goes beep and then you um then it knows what you are buying. And a QR code is a little more used between people. Like if there's a concert coming up, there might be a poster in town saying there's a concert and it might say here's a QR code if you want more information. And then if I scan the QR code, it will take me to a website that will tell me more about it. So, a QR code is a little more recent. In the last 10 or 15 years, QR codes have been popping up more and more places. I was just at a workshop. I was actually in Toronto this past week. I went to a YouTube workshop at YouTube. It was very, very interesting. Anyways, at the end of the workshop, there was a QR code we could scan to give feedback. So, that was really, really fun. By the way, Toronto is an awesome city. I wish I had had more time to stay but I didn't. Hey, let's do members only questions. Give me a second here to set that up and then while I'm doing that, let me say hi to the 340 people who are watching. That is awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Um I do wanna say a couple things before I do members only questions. You guys can start asking your questions. One, there is a live stream tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um if you have time, why don't you come and uh ask me some questions that I'm just testing focus there. Ask me some questions. Uh number two, I think I'm trying to think if I have two more weeks at this time and then the live streams on Friday will be a bit later. So, that will be nice. 
Uh, hey, I'm gonna answer some questions from the chat as well. I do wanna thank my members though for being members. If you're wondering what members are, they're people who have clicked the join button. That's somewhere around here and they've decided to support me on this channel. So, thank you very much for being members. Uh, let me get a question up and then I will jump back and forth between. Let me just take a minute here. Um, so, I'm gonna skip the political questions too. I'm not always familiar with or uh, know enough to comment on those. So, I'm gonna just let that be. Sorry about that. I'm not trying to be insensitive but sometimes people do ask me to comment on certain situations in the world and sometimes I don't know enough to comment. I am just Bob the Canadian teaching English. So, sometimes I don't know enough about what's happening in your country and I know you know a lot and it's very concerning. So, it is hard. Ruslan, hello my favorite teacher Bob. No question today, sir. Your lessons are amazing. Have a wonderful weekend and a cool track of the weekend. Oh yeah, the weekend. I think he has another song out, doesn't he? Or he has a TV show but I haven't watched it. I don't know if I will. Sounds a little, I don't know, interesting in a negative way. I don't know. I'll try not to be negative. Mode Eggs has the first question. Does your office chair have a lever to adjust the height? No, it doesn't actually. Did I remove? No, it has like um, I don't know what you would call it. Like there's a um, a collar you can spin. So, it has a threaded rod and you can turn it and then it goes up and down much slower. But my work chair at school does have a lever. But my work chair at school doesn't doesn't go all the way back. It doesn't go all the way back. Uh let's see here. Um John, sorry, I can't demonstrate that mode. John Wedge, hello Bob. As always, no question today. Just listening. I'm a bit, little bit late today but I'm happy to be here. Good to see you, John. Uh, and John says, good one, Mode. Lolly says, stuff in French can be machin, truc ou chose. Oh yeah, chose as well. Good. Thanks, Lolly. Key Park. Some things on other things Bob talked. I don't even know how to name them in my language. Yeah, we have that too here. Like notice, I was just talking about my chair and I'm like, well, there's like a a thing you can turn on my chair to make it go up and down. It's not a knob. It's not a dial. It's like a I called it a collar but I don't actually know the right name for it. It probably has a name but yes, Key Park, there's probably many things in English where I don't know uh, the exact name of it either. Uh Eugene Automation says, I am going to a thousand islands on Saturday. So, that is very cool. For those of you that don't know, Canada has a lot of water like bodies of water, lakes and rivers and ponds and there's an area around Kingston, Ontario uh, between Toronto and Ottawa where there are literally thousands of islands and it's a beautiful place. I've only been once. I went as a kid Um, but uh, yes, very cool. Have fun up there, Eugene. Freddie Wolf from the chat says, hi, Bob. Best wishes from France. How do you call the wheels that this was on a very old phone to make the phone numbers in prehistoric times. Uh so, that was the dial. Like you dialed the phone. Um I'm pretty sure that's what we called it. Like when I was a kid, you would go like like there was this yeah, you would is that where dial comes from? Because the phone actually used to have a dial on it. Probably. So, yes, that was the phone. We had an old time. We called it a rotary phone too. I think that was a word for it. Uh, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, phones used to have um like a circle with numbers and there was a little hole in the dial for each number and you would put it in the number three and turn it and then it would go back and then you would yeah, was, I should find an old phone and show you guys someday. That would that would be a good lesson actually, wouldn't it? If I could find 30 really old things and then instead of slides, like just show you the old thing. I have one so far. I'll ask my mom if she can find an old rotary phone at the thrift store. Let's see here. Um Eugene says, is an island a thing on things? Yes, I guess so because an island is on the ocean or on a lake. So, it is a thing on a thing as well. Moat says, your chair is too old to have a lever. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely old. My 1950s era chair. Uh, John, Bob is a cheap person. He doesn't spend money. I I don't spend money very easily. Although, I will say this. At market last night, 
Jen and I bought the biggest serving of ice cream. We did share it. So, I guess we are a little bit cheap but I did spend some money on ice cream. John says, I remember this dial on the phones. Yeah, when I was a kid, the phone had a dial. We had a phone in the barn and a phone in the house and they both had a dial. Rotary dial, I think. Yes. Mode says, by the way, I believe lever is pronounced differently in British English. Also, I think they use indicator to refer to the turn signal blinker there. I think they do. Uh, back to lever. We do say lever sometimes or lever. In Canadian English, both pronunciations are acceptable. Lever is probably the most common. Um but um you might hear someone say um oh, I moved the lever and nothing happened or I moved the lever and nothing happened. Good mode. I I I oh, I should have thought of that. Sometimes when I speak, I don't naturally think about the different pronunciations and sometimes it depends who I'm talking to. It does happen automatically. Um but if I was talking to someone and they said lever, I would probably then pronounce it that way for the rest of the conversation. So, if I was talking to like an old guy who immigrated from the UK and he said lever and yeah, indicator for turn signal. Yeah, signal light, turn signal. Key park. We can say I have something to do but we can't say I have some stuff to do. Right, Bob? Oh, you can definitely say that. Yeah. I have a lot of stuff to do today. I have some stuff to do today. I'll be there in 10 minutes because I have some stuff to do. You would say I'll be there in 10 minutes. I have some things to do. I'll be there in 10 minutes. I have some stuff to do. You will hear that all the time. It's a bit informal but very, very common. Why didn't you do your homework? Oh, I had too much stuff to do last night. Are you going to do it now? No, I have too much stuff to do. Yeah, we would say that. Yaroslav, no question today. Extremely useful lesson. Thanks. I'm afraid I will miss your live stream tomorrow. It's a pity. So, wish you all to have a good time there. Thank you very much, Yaroslav. We will try our best. Uh, Mode, why does everyone talk about bottle caps but no one ever mentions pull tabs? Yeah, so on a can of pop, I get, see, it, it used to be called a pull tab because you, in the 70s, I think you pulled it right off. Right now, I don't know if we call it a pull tab. I guess we would, yeah. Yeah. I don't drink enough pop to know what that's called. So, this goes back to what Key Park said. Even in English, I don't know exactly what we call that. The pull tab? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we would call it a pull tab mode. Um, let me see here. I was gonna say something else. Can't remember. Anyways, let me see if there's any questions in the form. This is from Vlad. Hi, teacher Bob. How would you call a sticker or piece of paper with price in stores? Have a nice day. We call it the price tag. Even if it's a sticker, I would still call it a price tag. You might call it the price sticker but generally when you have something and the price is on it and it's a sticker, we would probably call it the price tag. Mostly though, we just refer to it as the price. You know, um you wouldn't say um how much is that? Check the price tag. You would probably just say how much is that? Check the price. What's the price on that? That would be a more common way to do it. Uh let's see here. Key Park says, thank you. Freddie Wolf says, en France, nous disons souvent, j'ai beaucoup de taf, truc à faire. Taf, do you say taf? Am I saying it right? J'ai beaucoup de truc à faire. Beaucoup de taf. Ralph says, sorry, I had to take a phone call on my not rotary phone. Maybe it was already on the list but what's the difference between screen and display? They're the same. Yeah, sorry, I should have included that. Well, not totally the same. Like you would say like a phone has a screen. My camera has a screen. Um a calculator you would say screen or display. You know, I think as soon as it's it's full color and it can have video on it, we would more likely call it a screen and a display might just have like numbers or words. So, I think that would be to me When you say screen, I think like my camera screen or my phone screen, my laptop has a screen. When you say display, I think about like my oven has a display and it shows the time and it shows the temperature but it wouldn't, I can't play little videos on my oven screen. Uh let's see here. Mode says, I'll make sure to ask a question and call Mr. Bob the wisest teacher on your behalf tomorrow, Yaroslav. Thank you. Zeev says, hi to Lolly Lolly. John says, it's awesome to hear you speaking French. I hope speak French too in the future when I'm in Canada. Yes, I haven't been practicing my French though. I've been a little too busy. I need to get back at that. 
Um, Mode says, can I also add monitor to Ralph's question? Yeah. So, monitor is a term. I've used the term. My students who play a lot of video games call it their computer monitor. Most other people just call it their screen. I think because a lot of people have laptops now but like over here, this is my TV. Oh, you can't see it very well, can you? It's not very well lit. Um, this is my computer monitor, this dark, this dark thing over here. Um, but you could just call it a computer screen. Um, but definitely that would be something uh bigger, I would say. Um, Zeev says, or Lolly's talking to Zeev. Very cool. Let me get another question on the screen. I think I put the wrong question form up. So, Mary says, can we use knob or dial for the thing that controls the fan intensity? Yeah, I would say that. So, you, you can go one, two, three. You can turn the knob to one, two, or three on my fan or I can turn the dial to one, two, or three. I think I would most likely call it a knob but dial would be fine in that case too. I think turn the, I would say knob with a fan for some reason and I don't know the details. That's why we have these lessons, right? I would call it a knob. Uh, let's see here. Peter says, hi, Mr. Bob. Nice to see you. A great topic. I don't have a question. Have a nice day. Thank you. You have a nice day too for sure. Um, hey, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how there's a live stream tomorrow. I'm gonna thank all of the people who are watching and I'm going to turn off members chat and I'm going to say thank you to all of you who are members. You guys are awesome. By the way, the lesson's not over. My voice, it started to sound like the lesson was over. We got about 11 more slides to go. So, let's get back at it. Zeev says, very good weather here is hot and dusty. How about in France? Um, I don't know what it's like in France but in Canada, it is warm right now. Like, really warm. Okay, back to the lesson. Here we go. I should have a sip of water first. Where were we at? QR code. Engraving. So, an engraving By the way, this works in a couple of ways. You can engrave something and then it has an engraving on it. So, an engraving is when usually you have metal and you use something very sharp or you use a tool. It might even be powered that will etch out little pieces of the metal and then when you're done, all of the little lines make an engraving. If you win a trophy, it might have a little a spot on it where there's an engraving where it says, you know, best English teacher of 2022, Bob the Canadian. If I won a trophy, there might be a little engraving on it. So, it's when you have something metal and they kind of remove some of the metal to make a design or picture on it. Um, I actually have, um, I have a mug from a wedding. Well, not a mug. It's more of a beer stein like a big and it has a metal plate on the front. And it has the name of the bride and groom engraved. It has an engraving on the front. Snap. So, a snap is like a button. Uh, It does the same job but it works differently. There are two parts to a snap and when you push them together, it goes snap. Like it goes So, it snaps together. So, we use the word to describe the sound. We use it to describe the thing and we use it to describe actually doing it. So, when you snap a snap together, it makes a snap. Did you get that? When you snap a snap together, it makes a snap. Um I don't wear a lot of clothes with snaps. Um sometimes my pants might have a snap on the front when I put my pants on. Most of my pants have a button but a snap would have two parts. When you push them together, it goes snap. It might go click as well and by the way, I will do a lesson on sounds at some point. I just never get to it. Zipper. So, this is a pretty common one. I do think the zipper was invented in Canada. I'm not 100% sure of that. Uh let me just check for a sec. Where was the zipper invented? It says, oh, it debuted at the World's Fair in Chicago. Ah, I was wrong. Wait. It says that the Lightning Fastener Company in St. Catharines, Ontario created the first, well, Sounds like another one of those things where Canadians and Americans are fighting over who invented it. We did invent basketball though in Canada. Just 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 to uh, just to clear the air. Buckle. So, yes, I wear a belt every day. 
I wear a belt to hold my pants up but I also just wear it because I think it looks nice. It's a fashionable thing to wear. A belt has a buckle. When you put your buckle, when you put your pants on, you buckle your belt um but the thing on the front, the actual little loop with the thing that moves, notice I don't know the names of those two, um is called uh, a buckle. So, the the gold part here is called a buckle. By the way, the little tiny brown part is called the belt loop. It's a belt loop. You have belt loops on your pants but your belt itself might have a little belt loop at the front. But yeah, the gold part over there is called a buckle and we might even call it a belt buckle. Like we might name if it's if it's actually on a belt, we would call it a belt buckle. My watch has a band. So, this is a watch band. By the way, Jen and I talked a long time, not a long time. We talked for a bit yesterday about where you when you put your watch on, what is this part called when you put it together? We weren't sure if it was a clasp or a latch or a fastener. There's a, we weren't sure but this is definitely my watch band, okay? And this is my watch. Well, it's actually a Fitbit. So, a band. And again, we would probably call that a watch band if I was specifically talking about a watch. Laces. Uh, most of us have shoes with laces although it's becoming more common to have shoes that you can just slip on your feet. Shoes that don't have laces but all of my shoes have laces. When I put my shoes on, I tie my laces. Um when I get home, I undo my laces when I take my shoes off. My skates also have laces on them and uh I should probably get my skates sharpened although I'm not sure there's any more skating this year. The arena, I don't even think the arenas have ice in them anymore. So, maybe next year. A stamp. So, a stamp is usually something that lets you have something with ink in it and you put the stamp there and then you press it on a piece of paper. So, the thing is called a stamp and then the thing it leaves on the paper is called a stamp. Jen puts her flowers in brown paper and we have a stamp with the name of our farm and we use the stamp to stamp the brown paper so it has our stamp on it. I know I'm getting confusing but it's fun for me to say things like that. So, the thing we use, this thing is called a stamp and that little thing it leaves on the paper is called a stamp as well. So, when someone buys our flowers, there's a stamp on the paper that says the name of our farm. Bezel. So, your phone has a bezel around the screen. Your computer has a bezel around the screen. Um my phone has a little bezel. It's the area around the edge of your screen. So, anytime you buy a phone, they're trying to make phones to have smaller and smaller bezels. So, they want the whole front of the phone to be a screen. My screen, my phone has fairly small bezels. It's not huge but the bezel is the area around the edge. Our backyard has a gate and that gate has a latch. So, a latch is something where there's usually two parts and they click together. When we close the gate for our, actually our gate's broken right now. I need to fix that. Um when you close the gate, it goes click and then it won't open until you flip it or click it. How would I open a latch? Unlatch it, I guess. Um but we would probably just say open. That's the universal verb for opening something. When you close our gate on our back on our fence or on our backyard, um it has a latch and then it it will not open until we open it. Um I'm not explaining that one very well. I'm almost done and I'm feeling like uh I'm going too quick right now. Oh well, sorry about that. This is the last one though. My windows have a crank. So, a crank is something that you this is the cranking action. If I turn the crank one way, my window opens like the window right there. If I turn it the other way, the window closes again. When I was little, when I was a kid, the windows in our cars had a crank. You had to crank the window down and crank the window back up. So, notice I'm using the word crank to describe this. It has a little knob on the end. Um so, you grab the knob and then you turn the crank. Um but it's also the verb like you can say I'm going to open the window but I could also say I'm going to crank the window open. Can you crank the window shut because it's getting um cold or warm outside? Whichever whichever makes the most sense. So, it's something it's kind of like a lever but it's more we would definitely call it a crank. 
That's it. A lesson about things on things. By the way, as I was doing the lesson, I thought of about 11 more of these. I didn't write them down. I'll do that really quickly after the lesson is over. Uh, I won't do that. I won't do things on other things part two next week but I'll save it for in a few weeks from now. I'll do another uh, lesson because if you if I just look around me, I see lots Lots of things on other things. So, I'm sure I could create another whole lesson about that. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. I'm gonna head off to work and have an enjoyable uh, Friday. I hope you have an enjoyable Friday as well. Uh, Last things again, tomorrow 10 a.m. live lesson. Be cool to see all of you there. I will be outside. I'll have the river cam maybe pointing at the river or the road. I'm not sure. We'll see. Whatever However, I feel in the morning when I set up, I will point it in that direction. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I don't have a lot of time to say bye but I'll quickly say bye to who I see in the chat right now. So, bye to John Wedge, Yaroslav, um, Maria, Freddie Wolf, Lolly Lolly, Arena, Key Park, Dave the Canadian. Thanks for helping out. CS team is here. Good to see a CS team. Uh, Mode Eggs, John Wedge, Vitor, uh, thanks for the hearts. It's fun to see the hearts pop up. That's something uh, that I I don't always see the screen where that's happening. I look at a different screen. So, bye to Zeev as well. Let me just wait till some more names pop up. Bye to Ideal, Helton, Hafiez, Unsel. Good to see you, Unsel. Uh, Sophia, awesome to have all of you here. Bye, Ralph. Bye, Delaya. Delayla. Bye, Mode. Uh, bye to Manim as well. Anyways, have a good day. I'm gonna have a sip of water and uh hit the end stream button. I'm watching I'm looking outside because Jen's unloading the van from market. We kind of just came home and we didn't finish our work because it was late and we were tired. It's a little bit um it's a little I'm this is a silly thing to complain about but I work in an air conditioned building and then I went from there and stood outside in 30 degree weather on a street. We had a canopy but uh it was uh it was too quick of a change. I'm not adapted to hot weather yet. Anyways, bye everyone.